follow. He's detailed every path in his own hand. He wants to steer us down the straight and narrow and guide us till we reach the promised land. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. He turned around those side streets of sin. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. Trucking down the highway for me. Don't go another mile without Jesus. You never know what lies around me. You can't speed by everything but the judgment. Slow down and have a little talk with me. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. He turned around those side streets of sin. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. Trucking down the highway for me. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. He turned around those side streets of sin. I'm in it for the long haul with Jesus. Trucking down the highway for me. Trucking down the highway for me. Amen and good morning. I hope and pray you are trucking down the highway this morning. And I mean down the highway, not sitting on the side of the road. Amen. And I hope and pray you are trucking for Jesus. Good morning, drivers. And uh, once again, as I said, I hope and pray that your day is going so far according as planned. <laughs> Have you ever had a day that didn't go the way you had it planned? Amen. I tell you what, if you are a truck driver, you've had that happen before, and it will happen again. Amen. I'm going to share something with you this morning just from the heart, from life experiences. Y'all know that I've been uh, been trucking many years and having trucks and owning my own and all that stuff. You always have things happening. It's just part of it, and uh, if you can't handle the ups and downs and the changing of everything nothing goes according to plan hardly ever trucking business is pro probably not going to be good for you amen <laughs> so uh i just want to share something with you you know we we uh we start our day out and we got a, an idea what we're going to do and it didn't go that way and then sometimes we get all upset go on there brother carl see you on here and daddy too good morning uh Things don't go the way that you got a plan. That's why it's so important. I've been talking all year, stressing about starting your day out in prayer, starting your day out in, in the word of God. And uh, at the very least, that's why I wanted to have a morning devotion every day, something a little short, something you can listen to going down the road, kind of get your mind focused on how good God is. He is a great God. Even when things don't go the way you want them to go, he's a great God. Amen. And so I want to talk to you about just being able to uh, <clears throat> handle everyday situations as they come to you. And we take up our cross daily. We're ambassadors for Christ. We're, uh, we're to be out there sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, not spreading hate and discontent. Amen. So for those of you that's ever had a day that didn't go the way you had it planned, let me just share a little bit about our our day yesterday. Uh, as y'all know, I was on here yesterday morning. Before that, I was up about 3.30 in the morning, uh, reading the word, praying, getting ready to go on here and, and uh, 
hopefully say a few encouraging words. And we do that and we get going and we was we was in Cuba, Alabama. And we hit the interstate about 6.15 by 7 o'clock or so, maybe just a few minutes after 7. Uh, we were on the side of the interstate, broke down. And uh, we had made it, I think, 51 miles. So uh, <clears throat> our day was not going according to plan. What I want to share with you is whenever that doesn't happen, it can be quite irritating. Amen? Can I get an Amen. When it doesn't go the way you want it to go, it can be irritating. And unfortunately, even if you've been in the trucking business for 30 years, you still don't like it when it don't go the way you want it to go. And I want to read a scripture to you uh, over in Proverbs 15. And just uh, that's why I put this little title up, Talk Softly. <clears throat> when things don't go the way that I want them to go, I have a natural tendency to get louder than normal, to be agitated and irritated. And uh, I just want to get things back on track and not waste too much time and get going again. And uh, things didn't go the way we wanted to go, so uh, we're we're now mechanic and we don't have the money to call out a, a service man, a road call, four five hundred dollar road call to change the fan belt, which broke, which hadn't been on there, but about ten twelve thousand miles ago it was put on there new. So uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, just one of those little deals that I could not do it all by myself. My wife was a super trooper. I'm telling you, she was, uh, she was in there helping me. Y'all probably seen some of those pictures I put on. Uh, I crawled up under that hood, of which is under the bed in this bus. Amen. Uh, working on that motor. And, uh, but I just couldn't do it all from the, from the top and reach everything. I needed some help. And she was a, she was a trooper and crawled up in there. Of course, she's not very big and, got in there and was able to give me another hand. And I was on the outside and the bottom side, reaching up, helping him. We got her going. Now, my point is what I want to talk to you about is this, this, when these things happen, we can be irritated, whether it's with a wife, a husband, a dispatcher, uh, the mechanic you're on the phone with, you just got out of the shop and something happens again, whatever it is. We need to keep this in mind at all times, driver, because we are ambassadors for Christ. We are to give him honor and glory in everything that we do. Correct? Say amen. We give him honor and glory in whatever we're doing, and we trust the Lord day by day. We don't know who holds the tomorrow. We don't, we don't know who what the future holds for us, but we know who holds tomorrow. We know that we can trust him, so we walk by faith. So when these things happen, it says in Proverbs 15 and 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. And I want you to think about this. Uh, it goes on to say, The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. In other words, he's saying here that we need to have a soft answer to begin with. We need to be careful how we say what we say. Now, you can pertain it to pertaining to everyday life or to do with the political scene that's going on, and you run across somebody that doesn't agree with you, or whatever it is, uh, we have to be careful. If you get pulled over by a DOT man, and you get out of your truck, and you got an attitude, and and you're like, you know, what's this all about? What are you pulling me over for? I ain't done nothing wrong, blah, 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 blah. And I've seen drivers do that. <clears throat> that's not a good way to start out. You get out of that truck, best thing you can do, no matter how irritated you are, is to give him respect and give a soft answer. Amen. I can tell you from experience. <clears throat> uh, so we do this in everyday life. So as your emotions are high and what it may, whatever the case may be, you want to give a soft answer because number one, you're an ambassador for Christ. And I want to read this to you. I want to read you a definition. I like to look up these Hebrews, uh, Hebrew and Greek words and things in the in the original language. Now I'm going to read this verse to you again. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. I found this grievous to be very interesting. It it uh it has to do with painful, tall, uh, and then but it has a root word. This is what's interesting, driver. Listen to this. And it has to do with in the physical sense to carve out or to carve to fabricate or fashion. I want you to think about that. 
the root word of grievous in Proverbs here has to do with fabricate or fashion. And, and, and hence it's talking about in a bad sense to worry, pain, anger, uh, displease, grieve, hurt, make, be sorry. And I want you to think about this. <clears throat> it means to, to carve out, fabricate or fashion. How many times do we have things happen in life that are bad and aggravating and agitating, but many times we relay it to someone else in a fashion. It's really, we say it much worse than it really is. Yes, we broke down on the side of the road. I was not happy about that at all. But I was able to, and the reason I know I was 7.15 whenever I was calling the nearest Napa store, which was 22 miles away, according to Google Maps. For those of you who know the southeastern parts well, I was in Knoxville. I was almost to the Knoxville, Alabama exit. And uh, <clears throat> so I called Napa. Napa didn't even open to 7.30, but I just called. And a real nice lady at Napa in Tuscaloosa, Alabama answered the phone. I give her my belt numbers because I had the old cases from the last time and there was no belt left. And uh, she said, yeah, I got that in stock. So I told her my situation. Can anybody deliver that to me? And they didn't deliver, but she was kind enough to work things out. And they brought me my belts 22 miles away. So I had a reason to be thankful. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> they didn't have to deliver to me. They normally deliver to their mechanics, but they delivered to me. Now, not only that, while I was sitting there waiting, my engine had cooled off some. So uh, <clears throat> I could see the exit up there. I just couldn't read the sign. So I crank up and take off, and I make it up to the exit. And I pull over and kill it and let it cool again. And uh, there's a little fuel stop right there in Knoxville. And I make it over there to the fuel stop. And so I'm, I'm there. I'm set up. I'm waiting on. I've got the hood up whenever the lady comes up with my belts. So say I had a lot of things to be thankful for, and I could have been whining, griping, and complaining the whole time, complaining because I, I was messing up my schedule. Uh, Chaplain David and Miss Donna was going to take me out to dinner when I got here, <laughs> and I didn't get here at 9 o'clock last night, so I missed that. Amen. Uh, and as you well know, I, I like to eat even though I'm on a diet, so I was going to eat something good last night. But anyway. Things didn't go according to plan. But what I want you to see, driver, when things happen to you, and they will happen to you, you know they're going to happen to you like that. Look at the good. Look how, how God's working in your life. And look at the fact that even though this Napa store did not deliver, they went out of their way to, to get me my belts, which I was very pleased about that. So if anybody in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, uh, happens to talk to that, I don't even know the lady's name. But she was real nice, very helpful on the phone and uh, <clears throat> helped me out. And then the lady, another lady delivered uh, the belts. So long story short, we got off the highway. We got off the interstate because we was in a bad spot right by a railing and uh, wasn't a lot of room. I don't like to be stuck on the side of the interstate if I can help that. So we was able to get in the parking lot and do what we had to do. Took us several hours. Uh, we had to take things apart just to get to the belts and all that kind of thing, you know. But uh, we got the job done, and we saved our $500 road call, amen, and uh, got back on the road, uh, and we made a few memories, and I had a good-looking mechanic helping me. So <clears throat> we got a lot of things to be thankful for in that situation. <clears throat> what I want to encourage you is, <clears throat> excuse me, driver, this this passage, this scripture, this word here is telling us that we we need to not fabricate or fashion things in our words that they're going to be really worse than they are. And we are too dramatic sometimes. <clears throat> Even men truck drivers are too traumatic. I know a lot of them are going to say, well, no, that's the way my wife is. No, I've seen men. It's just way, way too dramatic. Amen. <laughs> I want to encourage you that you be mindful of these things when these things are happening in real life, in real time, <clears throat> that we be mindful of the things that we say, how we say them, who we're speaking to, and all of those things that we're encouraging others, <clears throat> even in our <clears throat> even in our downtime, even in our 
bad times, we can be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe it's what the world needs to see in us. They need to see <clears throat> that Jesus is real in our life. Not that we just attend church or fellowship meeting on Sunday. It needs to be that Jesus Christ is real in our everyday lives so that they will want what we have. I don't know how you get through these situations. I don't know how you go through this and have a good attitude, and whatever it is. Well, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, to have the mind of Christ. And that word mind in the Greek language could literally be translated attitude, have the attitude of Christ. And so <clears throat> I'm far from it. I'm far from perfect. But I want to encourage you drivers that you cultivate that, you, you try to make that happen in your life. And you do that through reading and studying the Word of God, filling your mind with good thoughts, ride down the road and listen to <clears throat> the Bible on on a CD, on, on your phone. Listen to good, encouraging music. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't keep up with the latest hip-hop or the latest country music or things like that. Every now and then I hear a song and I say, I ain't never heard that before. Well, somebody says, well, it's been out for a year. I, I don't listen to a lot of that. I listen to... Uh, good gospel music. I listen to praise and worship. And uh, most of the time I just listen to my wife. Amen. And uh, so I, I want to encourage you that you just uh, be careful about what goes in here. Because I'm telling you, what goes in is what's going to come out. You need to put in good things, healthy things. And the Word of God, most of all, driver, you need to cultivate that kind of a life that you, every day it's, it becomes a habit. As I said the other day, they, they say, they say, you know, the, the uh, people who know things say that if you do something for 21 days, it can become a habit in your life. So just try it. <clears throat> Give it three weeks. Try to do this consistently for 21 days and start your day out, whether you drink coffee or Coke or tea or whatever, start your day out with reading the Word of God in prayer. Spend a few minutes with the Lord every day. And get your day going and just see how it will affect you. Because, see, I had just spent approximately roughly about three hours with, with the Lord and you and the Bible. And then I had a, had a major setback. And, uh, and I believe, without a doubt, it's not because I'm some great spiritual guy. It's because of starting my day out in prayer and starting my day out with the Lord and, and asking the Lord to, to lead me and guide me today, asking the Lord to show me how I can be a, an example to him. Now listen, I'm an example for him to others. And I'm going to tell you, as a, as a husband, you need to be an example to your wife. <clears throat> as a wife, you should be an example to your husband and the rest of the world. Amen? So don't forget about those people you're closest to. You need to be an example. They need to see Jesus in you. And uh, I hope and pray nobody ever says to me, like, well, I thought you was a Christian. Or I thought you was a preacher. Uh, I don't. I don't want those kind of remarks. I want to bring honor and glory to God in everything, and our words. And there's a lot we could say about our words. And I mentioned it from time to time. The other day I said I, I talked about your words matter. It, your words matter, but it matters how you say those words, the context, and how you paint the picture. Be careful how you use your words. We can say all the right words, words that are not bad, but you can say things in that are harmful. You know, it's kind of like I told somebody one day, you know, you can say to your wife, he's like, hey, I love you, baby. Or he said, I love you too. It ain't the same, is it? No, it's different. Even though you said, I love you both times, it's different. So be careful about the way you speak, how you use your words. May it honor and glorify Jesus Christ. Amen. May it draw others to him always. That's what we're about, driver, as ambassadors for Christ, as we're out there trucking up and down the highway, trucking up and down the highway for Jesus. Be mindful of the fact <clears throat> you must share the good news. You know, I posted that YouTube video, and I put a picture of one of my old Kenworths I had. And uh, <clears throat> I had two of those Kenworths with studio sleepers, and both of those trucks had Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life on the back of them. That was John 14 and 6. And I had a driver who was a good driver, and uh, but he was very outspoken and opinionated. Uh, uh, it's kind of normal, amen. And uh, <clears throat> well, I put him in that truck for a little while. He drove that truck, and 
And uh, he wasn't a church going man by any means, but he tried to be a good guy and he was driving that truck. And he said, one day he had a bad day and he come in and he said, uh, preacher, you go ahead and take that off the back of that truck and get me something else to drive. So I'm telling you what, I had somebody just, you know how road rage happens, amen. And he said, I done, he was giving them a cussing before I, I thought about, you know what, they just come by me, pulled out from me, cut me off. And I thought about all that stuff on the back of this truck. And uh, that's why I had it on there. It was for me. So I'd be mindful that I'm an ambassador for Christ at all times. I had that on the back of the truck. I had a cross on my grill. That wasn't because I was trying to be super spiritual. It's because I wanted to remind myself when I would want to run up behind somebody and just push them out of the way. I can't tell you the number of times I've seen that cross in the back glass of somebody's car. And I thought, wow, you know what? I'm an ambassador for Christ. I'm supposed to let my light shine for Jesus. They probably don't look very good when they look in their little bit of rearview mirror and all they can see is the grill of that truck and the cross that represents Calvary. Amen. We're ambassadors for Christ, driver. We're missionaries. And we have missionary drivers at Truck Stop Ministries. And I hope and pray that you're one. I hope and pray you would pray and think about being a missionary driver with us. Man, how we need more people that's going to spread the gospel intentionally on purpose. But all of us are missionaries for the Lord Jesus Christ. We're ambassadors for him. And so I want you to be mindful of that in everything you do and the things that you say, the way that you live, and how you speak. Speak softly. Softly. Amen. Talk softly. Give him glory. You can only do that if you have Jesus Christ in your heart. And I hope and pray you know him. And uh, I want to encourage you that you would, uh, if you don't know him, really search your heart. Why? Why are you not a believer? Uh, hey, Brother Buddy, good to see you on there. Uh, Brother Buddy Isbell. Uh, <clears throat> I, I want you to uh, go back in your own mind. Is there a place and a point in your, in your life where you truly surrendered your life to Christ? You repented of your ways and you said, I want to be a follower of Christ. If you don't really have that day nailed down, you may not know the date like I do, but you don't have that day nailed down. You was at a chapel service. You was at Bible school when you was a kid. You need to get that nailed down, driver. Don't put it off any longer. Time is winding down. Song so my mama sings. I was going to play it if I could find it, but I didn't find it in time. I was just somewhere in here. But time is winding down. The Lord's going to come back. Things are changing in our country rapidly. <clears throat> I believe the Lord's going to come back. I do believe we're living in the last days. Uh, I don't think I'm going to live to be an old, old man. I think the Lord will come back for his church. So <clears throat> with that in mind, I, I encourage you, if you've never done that, please do so today. If you've never asked Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life, do so today. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All you have to do is to believe in Jesus Christ. Trust to what he's done on Calvary's cross. That he was crucified. He died for your sins. He conquered death, hell, and the grave because on the third day he rose again. And you ask me how I know, I tell you I know because he lives in my heart and he changed my life radically. He'll do the same for you. If you'll just let him. Won't you do that today? Call on the driver. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer together. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your goodness, Lord, and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for just being there with us, Lord. Ups and downs of life, Lord, and life is so much like a highway. It's up, down, curves. And, Lord, you're always there with us, and I thank you for that. I pray, Lord, that you would uh, help us to always let our light shine for you. Help us, Lord, to be mindful of the fact, Lord, that people who know that we're Christian, Lord, they're watching us. Whether we like it or not, they're watching. And may we let our light shine for you. Father, I pray for those drivers that are out there every day and keeping our country moving. They're certainly essential workers, Lord. And I just pray that you watch over them, keep them safe. On the highways, Lord, keep them safe from all the evils they run across, Lord, in this COVID-19, Lord, keep them safe. Please, Jesus. Father, I pray that you would uh, use them, Lord. Use those drivers, Lord. I thank you for those that are faithful to be on here and to... 
uh, listen to the devotions, Lord. I just I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to all grow in your knowledge and your wisdom, Lord, that we would be able to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ with everyone we meet. And Father, I thank you again for this ministry, and I pray your blessings on those who keep it going. I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be doing my little part, but I thank you so much, Lord, for those behind the scenes that keep things going, Lord, and I just ask you to bless them today. May they have a great day. Be with our chaplains, Lord, and encourage and strengthen them. So they might keep on, Lord, week after week, fellowship and Lord, leading those fellowship meetings, Lord, and uh, just pointing people towards you. I just thank you, Lord, for loving us in so many ways, Lord, how you work in our lives. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Driver, let me remind you, don't hesitate to call the prayer line. You need to talk to somebody, 1-800-248-8662. Uh, call <clears throat> somebody's there waiting to talk with you. Somebody's waiting to pray with you. And, of course, I always point you towards Jesus Christ. It's all about him. It's not about me. It's not about this ministry. It's about Jesus Christ. Amen. So I encourage you to call. And if you need to talk to somebody, pray with. And I ask you all to please be in prayer for our country. Uh, we've got a lot of ups and downs, things that are going on. I know there's a lot of things bouncing around on Facebook and uh, could happen. I don't know if it's going to happen. It could happen. If it does, though, no matter what happens, our, our country's in turmoil. We need to come together. And some rights need to be made right. Some wrongs need to be made right. Pray for our country. Amen. Y'all be safe out there, driver. And uh, hopefully, Lord willing, I'll see you again in the morning. And, uh, man, I hope you have a great weekend. If I don't see you anymore till next week, uh, keep trucking for Jesus. Amen. Keep that sunny side up and that rubber side down. Y'all be safe out there, driver. Love y'all.